Welcome to the Quantum Action Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about your environment or atmosphere as I like to call it. And for those of you that don't know, Quantum Action, the action word is actually an acronym for A for atmosphere, which is basically your environment, C for cash, meaning money, T for tuition, meaning you know the schools you went to in that, I for information, where do you get your information from, O for optimism, which is really important, and the N stands for natural or nutrition. Uh, it's what you're putting into your body food wise and that. So this is what the action word stands for, the acronym on action there. My name is Fabrizio Poli. I'm your host here on Quantum Action Podcast. Today we're going to delve into the atmosphere and talk about atmosphere. And to start with atmosphere or your environment, I want to tell you the story or the parable of the banana tree. Now, bananas grow in Sri Lanka and they flourish in Sri Lanka and India and lots of different types of bananas out there as well. I was quite surprised when I was there. And, um, you know, they're very nice and whatever. But if I take that banana tree in Sri Lanka and I bring it over to England, what happens? I put it in my back garden and guess what? No bananas. Say if I take the apple tree in my garden and I take the apple tree over to Saudi Arabia and plant it in the desert, what happens? Nothing. So my question is, is there something wrong with the banana tree? Is there something wrong with the apple tree? No, there's nothing wrong with the banana tree. There's nothing wrong with the banana seed. There's nothing wrong with the apple seed. But if you put it in the wrong environment, it won't do what it was designed to do. So how does this relate to our own lives? So our environment does influence us. And if you look at the study of epigenetics, and uh, Bruce Lipton has talked about this in his books, uh, you know, about environment, you know, environment does influence people, it does influence performance. And so when we look at environment, we have to look at the people that are around that we surround ourselves with, you know, our family, our friends, our people that we work with, um, you know, local leaders. Um, what are these people doing to us? What ideas are they putting into our heads? What have they got us reading? What have they got us listening to or watching? And is this improving us? Is this making us become a better person? This is the question. So part of your environment are the people around you. Also the, the house you live in, the neighborhood, the town you live in, the country you live in. I mean, are these, this situation uh, allowing you to flourish? Um, you know, some people, decide to leave one country and move to another other people say no you shouldn't leave your own home country you need to stay here you know at the end of the day you need to go where you can bring out the best in you so imagine like you're a banana tree and you're living in england you need to move you need to go to sri lanka okay um or you're an apple tree and you're living in i don't know dubai you need to leave and come to england um or France, or somewhere where apples grow, or, or Nebraska, or Florida, or wherever. Um, so, you know, this is the thing. So your environment does influence you. Um, now, on influence, um, I tell the story in my book, Your Attitude Determines Your Altitude, of the dream stealers. And there are two types of dream stealers. The first type of dream stealer is the obvious one, the ones that don't like you, the, the ones that hate you, the ones that don't want you to be successful, and they're easy to spot. But the second type of dream stealer, this is the dangerous one, because these are the people that love you. And I give the example of my English grandmother who went on and on and on at me about I should become a hairdresser because my father had a successful career with Vidal Sassoon in, in, uh, and became the director of European Salons and uh, we lived in the States and everything and that. And so she said, you know, you should become a hairdresser because your dad can pave the way for you. You can take over his business. Uh, but I just was not interested. And I know, you know, a lot of people like to take that easy route, uh, but I, I wasn't interested. At the end of the day, I knew I was cut out to fly and I wanted to fly airplanes. And that's what I went and that's what I did. So did my grandmother say these things to me because she hated me? No, she loved me. She wanted to help me succeed. She wanted me to be in a, in a situation where I had more chance of, of succeeding. And in, in her mind, uh, doing the same business that my dad was in was, um, was, was, was the best course of action. Um, according to her uh, ideas, uh, I, I didn't agree. And I just went off and did my own thing. So, you know, be very, very careful of those people that love you because they can be very powerful dream stealers. And you've got to stick up for yourself. You've got to turn around and tell everybody where to go and say, I'm doing this. I got this. and I'm going to make it happen. And that's really, really important because you, if you are that banana tree and you are living in England, you've got to move. You've got to move away from that environment. Um, it's really, really important to understand this. 
Um, so on this subject, um, my father did exactly that when he was living in Italy in his uh, early 20s. Um, he wasn't really going anywhere. He was working in a hotel, helping out in the kitchen and that. And the guy that ran the hotel noticed something in my father and he said to him, you know, I really think you should move to London. Um, and I can probably help you there, get a job as an assistant chef in one of the hotels there. So my dad listened, uh, off he went. He'd never been outside the country before, landed in England um, in early 1960s, couldn't speak a word of English. Um, he started working as an assistant chef and worked his way up. But uh, then he met my mother and he, uh, my mother was a hairdresser. He got went, decided he was gonna do that. Um, he went to hairdressing school and then he was working at the White Elephant uh, Club in London. He met Vidal Sassoon and Vidal was offering apprenticeships at the time, but you had to pay. So he went to be an apprentice for Vidal Sassoon and he actually was Vidal's apprentice for six months. Um, and so he worked as a waiter in the evenings and during the day he was working with Vidal Sassoon as an apprentice. And then at the end of the apprenticeship, uh, Vidal was impressed. He offered him a job. And that's when my father got given the opportunity. He was in the right environment. He brought out the best. And then from there, he, he had a great career with El Sassoon Corporation and then went on to, to form his own company and had his own salons and that. So if my father had stayed in Italy, uh, he would have never been able to have done these things. So somebody had seen in him something that he couldn't see in himself and said, look, there is this opportunity over in England. Why don't you go? And he said, OK, let's, let's go. Um, so, you know, it's important if you change your environment sometimes, you know, you can change your life. So when people say to you, you know, it's, it's all about you inside, you're not succeeding because of, you know, wait a minute, maybe you're not succeeding because you're in the wrong environment. So change environment, uh, change, change, because the environment will influence you. And that's really, really important to understand that. Um, now there's a lot of talk about, you know, um, marriage and relationships and that. And of course your marriage is important now. Some people today don't think marriage is, is, is a good thing to do, but there's some interesting information here. Um, first of all, um, the divorce rate in America is about 53% of marriages end up in divorce. In Europe, it's actually 71%. So that's interesting. Um, and um, so some people don't want to get married because they're scared of, get, of, of divorce. Uh, then the question here, a Pew Research Center did research on uh, married couples and unmarried couples, and they said 43% of married couples consider themselves very happy, while only 24% of those single uh, uh, classified themselves as, as very happy. So the, ha the, the, the married people are happier than the, the non-married people. So that's the first thing. Another interesting uh, poll was done in, in the book, The Millionaire Mind, by Thomas Stanley. It said 92% of millionaire households in America are composed of married couples. These married couples have one third the divorce rate of non-millionaire couples. And on average, they've been married 28 years. So that's some interesting information there. Um, so obviously, you know, this research is pointing towards the fact that married couples are happier uh, than non-married couples. Um, and interesting here, millionaire husbands ranked their wife's intelligence as the number one quality of their spouse. It's 95% of them said that. Um, so looks are important, but so so is intelligence and getting on. But above all, I've been married now 24 years um, and I, I always tell people, and it's a fact, my wife's my best friend, I'm her best friend. And I think friendship is really, really the basis of a successful relationship in a marriage. Um, so, but you know, your spouse is going to have big influence on you. Uh, and some marriages don't work and, you know, you see people divorce and then they flourish when they when they find a new partner or they end up on their own. Uh, so it's very, very important to understand this. Or maybe you, you, everything with your family is doing well, but the house you're living in is not quite the right thing. You know, there's, there's also energetics um, of places. Um, and I don't want to get too spiritual or airy-fairy or whatever you want to define it as. But, you know, the house you live in can have an influence on your performance. And there's all sorts of things in a house. For, you know, mold can be really, really dangerous. Um, there's a lot of research um, recently has come out about mold and how that can affect people's sleep. They give them headaches and also, and, and this will then uh, have an effect on their behavior. So, you know, some people may be feeling depressed and they go to the doctor and the doctor gives them a pill to help them with their depression. When in reality, it's, it's a result of the mold in the house. So um, sometimes changing house can just, just take your family with you to another house and, and that can change the whole situation completely. 
So, you know, really have a look at your environment and, and look around and look at the people, look at where you live and start thinking of possibilities. Start thinking, if, if I was to go there, if I was to change job, if I was to change career, if I was to change country or house or, or spouse or whatever it may be, um, could I improve? Um, and that's really, really important. Um, and people have, have an effect on us, whether we like it or not. And if we want to peak perform in life, we want to really do our best in life. We need to be around good people. And that's really, really important. When my father left Italy, my uh, nonna Tomasina, which is my uh, grandma Tomasina, my Italian grandmother said something really important to him. She said, when you go to London, you're going to meet new people. Make sure you find successful people and hang around those successful people because that will rub off on you. So if, and it, you know, they say, if you're the most intelligent person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Well, that's what my dad looked for when he got to London. He looked around and he, and I've always done this. When I go into a new environment, whether I'm in a course, whether I'm in a new workplace or I'm, I'm dealing with some new people, I always look around and I spot the ones that are doing better than others, the top performers. And I try and find out and get to know them and find out why they are top performers. But, you know, you still also have to look at those that aren't performing or that are failing and find out what they're doing that's causing that result. Um, be a student of life. Be a student of people. Um, understand what makes people tick, what doesn't. Uh, we can gain inspiration from other people by watching how they do things. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be in the same room as them. We can read about them in books. We can watch interviews on YouTube. We can do all sorts. We listen to podcasts. Um, there are different ways for us to be able to, you know, uh, understand how certain people function or dysfunction and find out the secrets of their success or their failure and be a student of success in order to be successful. Um, we need to study these things. And so our environment is really, really important. And uh, so or atmosphere, as I call it. So look around and just to recap, think of those people that are in your life right now. What have they got you thinking? What have they got you reading, listening to, watching? Uh, what can you change in your environment in order to change your performance, in order for you to be the best that you can possibly be? And that's the question uh, I leave you with today on the Quantum Action Podcast. Um, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel uh, podcast if you haven't done so already. And check out this other video if you're listening on uh, an audio format. Uh, subscribe or even go to YouTube or Rumble and you can subscribe there and watch the video format of the podcast. And that's all from Fabrizio Poli here on Quantum Action Podcast. And I'll see you in the next one.